within the software space, there is an overbelief. There's a too high degree of belief into pure play sauce. So pure play software as a service where everything is supposed to be self-service for the clients. I give you some reasons where SaaS enabled managed service makes more sense. So the first example where a managed service, a SaaS enabled managed service makes more sense than a pure play SaaS is where the user has to have a very high degree of specialist knowledge. We've seen quite a few companies where, especially in the sustainability space, where the users need to be very sophisticated. Yes, it's a self-service platform, but the users need to have a very high degree of specialist knowledge. Then it's sometimes better to offer the specialist knowledge and the SaaS platform as a package. The second area is actually also very generic. It's called the strategy execution gap. It's very common that top executives totally get what this SaaS product should do and how it should be used. But then they're delegating it down in the organization. And then you realize the strategy execution gap. And people further down don't necessarily realize the strategic role of this. They start to misuse it. A third area where a SaaS enabled managed service makes more sense than a pure play SaaS is where the execution around the SaaS platform requires a mix of specialist roles. Often, as one company, you need to have these full-time, whereas a provider, the solution provider, can have these resources split between many companies and therefore reach a much higher economies of scale, so lower cost versus value point. Another example where a sauce enabled managed service makes more sense than a pure play sauce is in an early market. So when you introduce something new into the market, you often benefit from embedding it with people. So you are delivering the function rather than the software in the early market. And there also there's a price advantage. You can charge for the work, which is normally less price sensitive than the software is. There are many more areas, but I'll give you one last on my list. So oftentimes a SaaS platform is filling a gap between functional areas that are organized in silos. And so sometimes the software is covering several functional areas in a certain process. And there it's sometimes easier that the third party is dealing with this than internal resources because they are normally reporting to a functional head. And then you have these siloed battles internally. One of the most mature areas when it comes to a SaaS enabled managed service is salaries. So most companies, even the biggest companies in the world, are having third parties dealing with salaries. They are using actually a SaaS enabled managed service. So you have a person to talk to, they're doing the job on top of a SaaS platform, but they're doing it at a third party. But for your employees, even the Fortune 500 companies are doing it this way. If we take ourselves as an example, we are a SaaS enabled managed service. And there are several motives. First of all, you need four specialist knowledges to run what we talk about, the deal orchestration enablement. And we can split those four specialist roles across many clients. So it's cheaper, so much better economies of scale. We also have the expertise on how to do deal orchestration enablement around our clients' most important deals. That requires training, so we can never recruit someone and they're, boom, up to speed immediately. And the third reason why we are doing a SaaS enabled managed service is actually the strategy execution gap. Oftentimes, the top people on the client side, they understand how to combine marketing, sales, social selling, and intelligence around the most important deals. They typically have to delegate it down into the organization to someone or a bunch of people that are not really up to speed with the strategic importance of these existing clients we want to grow and these clients we have in the pipeline that we want to win and how to do that. 